All right. So those close to me know that you know there's been some issues lately with uh, articles and videos and things that have been produced um, that disagree with the work that I do. Uh, and you know, I think for the most part, uh, like that's okay. It's okay to have a difference of opinion. It's okay to um, critique an approach and, and different things like that. And I think it's important to have that discourse and that dialogue. Um, but with this, this particular situation, we've actually ventured into um, what you know I think is accurately called fake news. Uh, I try not to use that term. One of my colleagues, Luke, uh, kind of talked about trying not to use that term anymore. Fake news. Um, and not to give it kind of power because right now it seems like the majority of the time that fake news is used as a, as a phrase, it's just to discount something that you disagree with. And we can't, ever, we can't ever normalize that. We can't normalize that just because I disagree with an article um, or the, the implicit bias that may exist in an article means that it is fake news, right? Like we, we definitely should be evaluating bias and understand the bias. I think it's very important. And that's why I feel like I'm pretty clear about my position is because your bias comes through no matter what. Um, and so if you're, if you try to pretend like you're neutral, call yourself fair and balanced when in actuality, your bias is coming through very clearly, um, then I think that does a disservice to your audience or to your readers or whatever that may be. Um, and so this most recent, you know, article that came out that, you know, has my name in it and also one of my colleagues, um, you know, the title of the headline was extremely misleading. Um, it said Bellevue high school teacher tells conservative their opinion isn't welcome there. Um, so not only is the, the title just very misleading because the person who wrote our school and that a teacher responded and said your opinion is not welcome is somebody who identifies as a white supremacist and identifies as a neo-confederate uh, and used white supremacy based arguments um, in, in their letter and so you know it's just inaccurate it wasn't telling a conservative or all conservatives their views wasn't welcome it's specifically focused on those that are based in white supremacy uh, and then the second piece is in the article, they, they refer to the person who wrote the letter as a concerned citizen, which I think very clearly implies that it's somebody, it's a constituent. It's somebody that's part of our district that lives here um, that wrote in about this. And that wasn't the case either. This person does not live in Bellevue. They are not in our attendance zone. They're not even in Washington State. Um, and so they're not a concerned citizen in the way that I felt like it was very clearly implied. Um, and so that, you know, kind of makes this fake news. And so how do we, you know, I've been long before I personally got involved with it, I've been wrestling with in my classes is how do we teach students to be critical consumers of media? How do we teach them to look at where the source is coming from, look for clues and signs that it is from an inaccurate source or a biased source or whatever that may be so that they can factor that into their evaluation? Because what we have now is this, you know, clickbait title of Bellevue teacher tells conservative their opinions not welcome. And it just gets shared based off of the title of the article. Um, and, you know, I think in some ways that resonates with some students. They may feel like their perspective is not welcome there. And so seeing that, you know, confirmation bias, they receive that headline. They're like, oh, I feel like I've experienced that. Share. Um, and I think we need to deal with that. I think we need to have open and frank conversations about making sure that different perspectives are welcome and that nobody is ostracized for having a different view. Um, and we can have those conversations in school and people from all backgrounds can have that. We, we should be welcoming that. Um, but at the same time, in a school that's designed to protect something, if your argument is based in the dehumanization of another group or another individual, then I'm not sure that we can actually welcome that and that would that that is a valid perspective to share um in that space and so you know i think as as an educator moving forward right we need to continue to really teach our students critical literacy skills uh, for the 21st century and be able to um, analyze that ourselves and be very careful i think facebook has a tool that you can use now to see if you've ever shared something that's been deemed as you know fake news or deliberately misleading uh, or liked it and so you can kind of do a self-check and and see you know how, how you're doing personally um, but really we i think everybody every citizen needs to be vigilant that you know they understand where their their new source is coming from where they hear things from and then you know factor that into how you know, how much that impacts their opinion and, and their perspective. You know, my vlog is my personal opinions. 
um, about things, and you know, I try to present facts to back up my opinions when I when I do different pieces. Uh, but I, that that's coming from my perspective. I don't purport to be a news source or anything along those lines. Um, so, you know, check out check things out and and be vigilant because it is it is very easy to be able to replicate and um, seemingly legitimate sources that can cause harm to both yourself and to communities. So. Be, be vigilant, and we'll see you next time.